Hello everybody and we're back. And we're back to discuss the complex topic of addressing. We feel everything is in the docs, but you still ask so many questions about message passing and how the objects talk to other objects in default that we decided to well record a video about it. And we, as in, I am Oleg. And I'm Mikael. And hello. <laughs> so what exactly are we showing today, Mikael? Uh, we're gonna go through uh, some simple examples. As you said, we, we do have things on the documentation pages that people could dive into, uh, like the learn pages here. We have the manuals. And, Which are your favorite? Uh, and then we, you can go down to and see the addressing here and then uh, on to, to message passing. So everything we're gonna talk about today is actually in this in this document, it looks a little bit different. We work with a, with different examples today, but and I have an, an immediate and probably the most stupid question: addressing and message passing, which includes what? So addressing that also includes message passing, but what also? Well, well, is there? If, if you're gonna send a message, you need to send yeah. it to someone, and yeah. that is addressing. Okay. Uh, yes, and message passing is the mechanism of of sending something away. So so uh, you wouldn't be able to do message passing without without addressing. Cool, and since stuff is in the docs, we are not reading the docs aloud, which could have been fun, but we're not doing that. Instead, we're looking into the project of yours. Yes, uh, this is a project I'm working on that's gonna, it's gonna end up as a tutorial uh, later on, uh, really soon, I hope. Uh, so this is gonna be a sort of a sneak peek into that tutorial, or cool. parts of it, at least. So what is the main problem we're solving now? How well, to talk to the objects? <clears throat> yeah, we let's uh, look at what what this project uh, includes. Uh, first of all, this is a very simple. Um, uh, it's an embry for game where you uh, have this little guy. I'm going to show. This is the main collection. You see, there's a, a little guy here, and there's a level, and there's some UI elements. If I run this, uh, I can walk around with this guy. It's, it's on a planetary surface. I can collide with these objects and if I leave the screen nothing happens so there's no camera or anything and, and you you have a game counter here so so which should suggest that you will be able to pick up games so what we're gonna do here is to add a, uh, first start off by adding a special effect to this guy mm -hmm. and then we're gonna uh, add uh, a couple of games and see how we can pick them up and, and do some behavior cool so the first thing we're going to do is to do add a small special effect to this this uh, character. If we look at the, the astronaut game object, it includes a couple of things. We do have this is a sprite image. There's a collision object that defines the uh, the, the shape, sh the the shape of the of the collision, which makes it possible for us to to prevent him from running through the rocks and all that. There's also a script that controls movement of this guy. Um, I have prepared a, a dust particle effect. Beautiful. Uh, it doesn't look much. This is it, it playing in the in the editor. So we're, what we're going to do is to start by adding this effect to the game object by right. I'm right clicking on the game object in the uh, game object file and adding a component file. Uh, this particle effect uh, mm -hmm. exists as a as a mm -hmm. component file. And that's it. Now it's in there. And if I run this, uh, nothing will happen because the uh, particle effect does not. No, that it, doesn't it has run. to start. Yeah, it we have to start it somehow. And to do that, uh, we're gonna go into the uh, script for the astronaut. And just to try this out, uh, here we have an, a function that's called on reload that, we, that mm -hmm. is going to be run every time we command hit. R. Yeah, exact command R. Uh, and I have added a line here that says particle effects play and then this weird little thing. Dust. Dust with the hash uh, same before. So if I reload, we can see that if you look closely, you see that it started. Yeah, it started and it run, runs once. So what we can do is now we know that it works we can just 
take this line and put it in a, in a proper place. Let's see here, we have an animation function somewhere here. Yeah, here, this is where he walks. So whenever he's moving, let's uh, run that. Oh, that's way, way, way too much. <laughs> Smoky. Yeah, smoke. But le let's uh, do something like uh, uh, if math random. That's a value between zero and one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's less than point one, then play the effect. And then so see. with ten percent. Yeah. Chance of playing the yeah. effect. So this looks pretty okay. We're gonna move it down a little bit as well to make it look nicer. Let's go back to the effect. And this is the dust effect. And I'm gonna just move it down to the feet. Mm -hmm. And nice. There you go. Not smoky anymore. Yeah. So, so the, now we have solved a practical problem and what we did here was that we, we, um, we played the particle effect by um, ref referring to it mm -hmm. uh, with this, with this uh, call. Hashtag. Yeah, with this call particle effects play. And this bit here is actually the address or an address or, uh, to that uh, um, component. And what we do have in default is that, let's say I have a game object here. This is a game object. And we do add a couple of uh, components. We have sprites and, and scripts and, and whatnot. And we added one that, that was called dust. Uh, we can see that name actually, if we go back to, to the editor, we can see if we look at in the game of it, we see that it has the identity ID. dust. There's also an identity for the for the script. It's just called astronaut. The sprite is called sprite and so forth. So what we're doing here is that uh, from the script that was called astronaut here, we called uh, particle fx play uh, this looks horrible, <laughs> and then we're gonna refer to this guy here. And we do that by calling it by name. And since we are in the same game object, we can just, we can, we can just refer to it directly by name. Um, the thing is that, that everything that's, that's below here, all, all, the, all the components, we need to be able to distinguish components from other game objects. Mm -hmm. So that is why we use the hash sign. That is a separator that says, okay, now we're talking about components. So dust. So this, this line will work in any script in any game object that it has a component called dust. And since we, we use the particle effects play function on it, it has to be a particle effect. Uh, compon component, otherwise it wouldn't work. Okay, so what you're saying, if you had multiple characters yeah. on the screen with the dust component, yeah. all this... Exactly, so we can, we can actually try that. Uh, we can, uh, let's see what happens if we just duplicate, duplicate. Mm -hmm. this guy and move it a little bit. Yeah, so this is astronaut one, but the components yeah. are... We see that we, now we have, both of them have the same script, so they react to input the same way, and both of them play their respective particle effect. So it works. Okay, so the message dispatcher doesn't care about game object name in this case, only about the name of the component. Exactly, so, so since we are like inside uh, a, particular compo a particular game object, this is the game object namespace so, so to speak here and and if we use a name like this uh, some name we refer to a, a component within this game object the thing is that it's pretty common that you want to re refer to another game object so let's say we have game object 2 over here and it has a component here that's uh, that's also called name mm -hmm. uh, how can 
something here, like say, say you have a script in here, you want to refer to this guy here. That's pretty common mm -hmm. uh, use case. And we're going to look at a, an example of how to do that. So uh, let's uh, add one of those uh, gems. And we do have uh, prepared a gem. And let's add uh, one of those to our main collection. Uh, add game object file and let's choose the gem here. And then move it up here so we can see it. Oops. Uh, we need to. I don't know. Something happened when I cleaned up this. Okay, so now we, we do have the ga gem, game orbit file here. And we can see that it, it has an animation on it, but and there are other things here that um, there's a collision object on it, for example. So we will get some, some sort of collision here. So what we're gonna do now is to start by adding a script for this, uh, for this gem, let's call it gem script. Uh, and save that and I'm gonna go back and add that script add component file and gem script and then I'm gonna reload sorry here we go so now it has a script and if we what happens when we collide is that we will get a message uh, from the physics engine to, to each of these objects. So both of them will mm -hmm. get a collision message. So we can print uh, message ID, for example, here on this guy. And then let's see what happens when we, we see we get mm -hmm. like a trigger, trigger response. response and collision response. So that's, that's what the physics on the gem says, yeah. right? Uh, so we and we can add uh, some kind of behavior here. So let's say that if message ID, let's care only about the trigger response for now. We don't need more uh, more detail than that. Then let's print the message that we get uh, and collide and we see that okay whenever these guys collide we get a table that says okay um, we can enter message which means that the, uh, the uh, trigger uh, has been entered we also get some information about uh, who we are colliding with and I'm particularly interested in this this thing the other ID so we have added this uh, script to the to the gem, I'm gonna clean up a bit here, and just because we're only interested in in uh, reacting to the to the collision message or the trigger uh, response message. So we do have the on message. So we get the message from the physics engine when the when the these two collide, and we add uh, we add some um, some code that says okay if this is a trigger response we know they collide. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna move the gem to the position of the of the player, uh, shrink it so it disappears, and then we can uh, so it looks like mm -hmm. you picked it up. And then we'll update the GUI, I guess. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna uh, if we have time. We, if we, we have yeah. Time. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is to make sure that we do have uh, we, we need to get we need to uh, get the position of of the player game object and now we have the exact exactly this situation that we talked about we do have the game here and we do have the player here so the game has a script and that script need, needs to somehow ask uh, the player where are you so we need to address the player and we, we're gonna address the player game object uh, components don't have uh, they have positions relative to the game of it, so, but, but a game of it has a position and rotation and, and scale and so forth. Yep, uh, so, transforms. So, yeah, transforms. So we're going to get the position of the, of the player and we do that by, let's, uh, uh, pos let's call it position, pos for position and then we're going to do go get position 
and then we're gonna ask for the position of the player. No hashtag. No hashtag, exactly. So that, that tells uh, the system, the addressing system, that okay, we, we're asking for for something else than than, uh, than the component, and, and which is. And what the, can that be? That can be a game object, since we cannot it, really talk. Yeah, to it, it, it's only game objects. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if I wanna address something specific in that game of it, I add the hash and then mm -hmm. I, I add, the, say the name there. But mm -hmm. we only need to know the address of the, of the game of it at this uh, point. So let's print that position and make so sure that we, we get it properly. So, okay. Oops. Yep. Oh, sorry, it's not called player. I think it's called, <laughs> it's called astronaut. Yeah, that's why. So we need to change this to astronaut. Uh, that's the name of the game object. And the names of the game objects within the collection are unique, right? Yeah, they have to be unique. Uh, otherwise, addressing wouldn't work. So if I may, if I have an astronaut uh, object, uh, what we did before was we cloned this yeah. guy into another one, and you automatically get astronaut mm -hmm. one. If I change this to astro astronaut, we we get it gets yeah. red and th it wouldn't work. So because suddenly we have two things that mm -hmm. have the same address, and you can't have that. Right. So we get the position of the astronaut. Uh, we Whenever we collide with it, we see that it prints out down here, mm -hmm. uh, the position of that. And now we can uh, we can uh, act on that. And let's do a uh, geo.animate. And we're going to animate the position of uh, the current game object, which is the which is the game. And the current game object, there's a shorthand for that, which is the dot. Mm -hmm. It means just the current game of it. There's also another shorthand that is hash, which is... The component. Yeah, the current component, which in this case is the script. Uh, but we're going to an animate the position of the, uh, of the current game of it, which is the uh, game. And we're going to position, and we're going to play back that uh, playback once forward. Oops. And two... Pos was the was the name of the position that we got, and we're gonna use some easing. Uh, let's do let's, see, let's do linear and duration. Let's do it for zero point three seconds. So what we will you see that uh, now it will follow me. So, <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. we're in the. Yeah, we, we in the collide zone. Yeah, and then when it comes uh, comes running after us, it will collide again. So it, it just mm -hmm. yeah. So what we're gonna do is that uh, when this is done, uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, finish. So uh, we're gonna add a function here, uh, and what this function is gonna do is is gonna do it. Oh, sorry. and delete that one just for now so uh, okay uh, so now I have to restart it because I deleted it so what, what's gonna happen here is that okay pop, and mm -hmm. then it disappears we can make it a little bit more fancy by also animating uh, we can animate the scale of this guy uh, once forward to let's say scale 0 0.01 same easing uh, same timing we don't need an end function because mm -hmm. we do have it here already so let's see how this works oh there you go it gets smaller right yeah so it looks like we, we picked it up and we can we can uh, now add before we delete it we could add add uh, code to in Increase gem counter. Right, so we have a, an address for the astronaut here, uh, and this uh, works because uh, let's see, 
the reason why, why this works is because uh, this, this is called gem, this is called astronaut. And as long as these two guys are in the same collection, or at the same collection level, uh, they are both in the main collection right now, we can, they can just refer to each other by name, astronaut or, or gem. But in a real game, when you start building something, you, you want to you wanna structure your stuff uh, a little bit more than just like throwing everything into, into, uh, into one the main yeah, yeah. One, one collection. So a common thing that you might want to do is to break out, uh, let's, say you have, let's say you have a level collection. So, so here we have one that's, that's currently, um, it just contains the, the map, which is, which is a tile map at the moment. So let's say that I want to, I want to add my gems here instead. So let's add a uh, game object file and let's, oops, sorry. Uh, there you go. And then we're going to move this one. Oops. Oh, there you go. Got the wrong one, and then we're gonna add more of these gems. Let's put four in there. Oops. Move this one up here. Let's see. Okay. So let's save this and run, and we see that. I'm going to have to remove the original one as well. Uh, so now uh, these gems are in the, in the level collection and this one we're going to remove. Okay, uh, I'm also going to drop this guy down a little bit so it's on screen. Okay, now what happens if I, if I touch these? No, nothing happens at all. And the reason why, why we actually get an error in, in, uh, in the console here, it says that instance astronaut not found. What we just did was that we changed this, this, uh, this outline, this layout of, of, our, uh, of our game into something that looks like this. So we do, we do have the main collection here. This is main. Uh, and we do have the astronaut up here and then we have the level collection inside um, and here we have all the all, all the games with uh, their scripts so there's a script on, on, on each each of these you can see this structure actually if we if we go into um, uh, the editor and open the main collection again you can see that okay here we have Sorry, this is the astronaut, the game object, and here is the level collection. And if we open that, we see all the games. So, um, what what happens is that these scripts tries to ref, uh, refer to uh, the a game object in the same collection. Yeah, in the same collection at the same level uh, inside here. So if we would have uh, the astronaut down here, it would work, but we don't. Uh, we need to find a way to for, for these guys to reference mm -hmm. out here. And uh, if we write something like uh, astronaut, that is called a uh, relative reference mm -hmm. or a relative address. Yeah. So you relative have to, to the current collection. Yeah, relative to the current collection, if we, if we uh, have a, a game object name or relative to the current game object, mm -hmm. if, we have, if we have a, a component name, yep. like, like that. Uh, but there's a different way of addressing, which is called ad, uh, absolute addressing. Absolute addressing starts at the root uh, of the current game mm -hmm. world, which is the main collection. Uh, and we indicate that we want to start there by saying slash first and then we can go uh, down through the hierarchy this guy is just in that mm -hmm. route so we're just going to say astronaut you don't write main here right 
No, because uh, main is um, it gets attached at the root level, so, so okay. there is there is no name. You, you can. Oh, let's not go in. Let's not go into. <laughs> no, no, let's keep it simple for now. So, so the root collection, which is the one that starts, it's everything in that collection is going to be uh, uh, at uh, slash at, at the slash. So the 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 only way the way we're going to solve this is just to do this simple thing. We're going to put a slash there, and when we reload, we can pick these guys up. You see, so now it works again. Similarly, if we for some reason want to refer back, I'm not going to do this mm -hmm. in code though, but I'm, I'm going to explain. If I'm if the script here wants to refer to to a gem, to a gem. Let's say that this is gem one, three, three. Yeah. Okay, you know them by heart. Yeah. Uh, if I'm, I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to write. Um, I can start with a slash if I want to. I don't have to in this case. I can I can use an absolute or relative addressing here mm -hmm. in, in this case. The absolute address is going to be slash and then level and then slash again and then gem three. That is the absolute address. It right. starts from the root and then goes through the the hierarchy of collections to the game object. So this is the, the idea of the game object. And this is the full this is the full path of the game object and an absolute path. An alternative way of writing this is actually a relative uh, path to the game of it, from starting from from uh, the astronaut, and we can just write level gem three. This assumes that at the same level, uh, at the same uh, uh, context that the astronaut is in, there is a co collection called level. So we can use this, uh, this is the relative one and this is the absolute one. There is no way of doing a relative uh, address out here. So, so you can't do that. This is not possible to do. You, you can only go down into the, further down into the hierarchy mm -hmm. re with relative addresses. Because level collection is included in, the, in main collection. Yeah, exactly. So main, no knows about level but level doesn't really know about main exactly that's uh, main knows about level but level doesn't know about main right so and that's it really and this looks easy but i'm sure it's not because we have lots of questions about message passing on the forums so yeah. i bet you just showed a simple case well th there are a couple of things that that people do uh, tend to do. Uh, one of the things is that you tend to be overly specific. So uh, if, you, if you have, if you have uh, two game objects, you should use relative addressing between them. There's no point if these guys are, let's say that these guys uh, A and B uh, are in a collection, in a collection, in a collection. They can refer to each other as slash something slash something slash something slash a and b mm -hmm. there's no point because th this 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 will cause you trouble you should not do this unless you have very specific reasons to do it what you should do is that if a wants to talk to b and they are in the same collection just use yes. the name b mm -hmm. because that will if you if you copy that code and use that anywhere else or copy the game of it, they will still work. These two will work together. If you do this, they will only work together in that specific collection. So that's a common mistake that people tend to do. So keep it simple, keep it short, use relative addressing. Um, I guess factories is something like a more also a common but more complex case. We wouldn't touch that today. Mm -hmm. We will touch it next time. Yeah, factories factories do give you an address for everything, uh, and the engine will 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 uh, invent an address mm -hmm. for you. So, so, but it's it's not really hard. But if you if you do understand how addressing works, it's not hard. Do we have this in the docs? We do. Like how uh, to talk to the objects spawned by factories. Yeah, we do. Uh, so here is the addressing uh, doc documentation. We do see that, okay, this is pretty much what we went through today, how to address different uh, game objects and components. Uh, it goes further 
than what we have done today. Uh, so pretty much you can read down to here, absolute addressing. And then it gets a little bit more uh, complex when it talks about like URLs, how to, how to use them to, uh, to address and how you can construct these objects and also how to talk to, to uh, between different game worlds, things that you look And dynamically. if you think that docs are bad or unclear or that we need you know, to do this video, just tell us and we'll do it. It's not complex yeah. for us, if you really benefit from that. We think that such things are better explained in text, but we get the feedback that, hey folks, do the videos, we really love the videos, so that's why we do the videos. But we prefer, we think it's still better in the text. Mm. Again, you tell us what to do, that's, that's how it works. And also, what we did today is going to be in a, in, a, in a tutorial soon, and it's going to be a little bit bigger than what we, what we did today, and, and more details. What is the best tutorial today to look into, into message passing and addressing? Do we have any, any small examples, well, for example? Well, pre pretty much all the, uh, all the tutorials do uh, some sort of, uh, of message passing, even the, the simple side-scroller. Because that's the natural way yeah. to reference um, objects yeah. in, in, in default. Yeah, so, 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 so th there's, there are uh, things here uh, that actually for, it does addressing, uh, very simple addressing uh, though. But, but, but Any still. project with complex addressing with factories and the like? Uh, if you I remember... I think that maybe, let's see, I wonder if the color slide probably do, does something like that. Um, and also uh, the, run, the old runner tutorial, uh, the magic link tutorial. Uh, it's it, it's so s central to, to how you do things in default, so, so you can't escape it. Good, yeah. so you know where to look, you know the basic drill, which is why we're recording this video, to get you started easily. You know where to look next, you know what to do if you're struck, go to the forums and ask the questions and we'll be there for you. Now, we also mentioned one main mistake of what people do, mm -hmm. like overly complex addressing. Yeah. Any other things to avoid? No, I think that is the main thing to avoid when you start uh, and just experiment with, with addressing. It takes a little while to get used to how it works and uh, to find your way around. But uh, as, after a while, it will, it will become second nature stop being a problem. Tell this to the people who have been programming objective <laughs> with yeah. objective mindset like for the last few years. We hear you but mm. like we like message passing more and it's also faster and and we won't dig into this. Mm. So if, if you like default please also like message passing. Right? Right. Thanks for being with us and see you next time. Thank you.